Welcome to Polyether Ether Ketone, or PEAK, lecture for thermoplastic resins. I did not stutter. I meant to say ether ether in a row like that. Besides, it spells PEAK, which is adorable. So this is, again, one of these sulfur and oxygen containing thermoplastics, uh, polyether ether ketone, second from the bottom, which means we're wrapping up this list pretty soon. And shown here is the structure of polyether ether ketone. So how do you get the name? So it's poly, once again we have a bracket and a subscript, so that's that's a polymer. Ether, ether, ketone. So that's why it's called polyether ether ketone. You're looking for two oxygens in the backbone and then a carbon double bonded to oxygen as well. So that's your clue that that is peak. This was developed in 1977 and commercialized in 1978. Uh, just so I can define exactly how old I am, I was born in 1977. Uh, so this was Victrex, peak was developed in 1978. Uh, Victrex is now an independent company as of 1993, and uh, Victrex Peaks resins are available in molding, so granule and powder, film, and coating. There are other peak producing companies, Solve Advanced Polymers, Quadrant, Garda Chemicals in India, and then Oxford Performance Chemicals makes uh, OPM PEKK, which is polyether ketone ketone. So uh, these are uh, other producers. Typically, when you're seeing a competitor of polyether imid, it is peak. So I'm going to show you the comparison of the two. They are both thermoplastic. Uh, I've shown, here's polyether imid again. Once again, it is color-coded. There is our imid. There is our ether. So here we have our polyether ether ketone. Ether, ether ketone. Polyether imid is a little bit lower density. Its TG is about 215. When it comes to polyether ether ketone, its TG is 143. And that's because this oxygen in the backbone adds additional flexibility, whereas this is very rigid. So uh, polyether imid is amorphous and transparent, whereas polyether ether ketone is semi-crystalline. They have similar tensile strength. Uh, they are both considered uh, self-extinguishing, but polyether imid has a higher limiting oxygen index. Uh, they both have some degree of moisture absorptivity, but it is higher in polyether imid. And uh, polyether ether ketone is a little more susceptible to chemical attack. Uh, it, has, it is susceptible to both acids and bases, whereas polyether imid is not. Again, comparing these. Overall, polyether imid has better overall properties and performance, and the exception to this is the hydrolytic stability. PEAK is used primarily in coating and insulation of high-performance wiring, uh, in the aerospace and computer industries, whereas polyether imid would not be as uh, effective as the Victrex peak. You can see they're a little bit different. So this is clear because it's amorphous. This is semi-crystalline and therefore is opaque. But they both have got kind of brownish color. Uh, they are semi-crystalline, up to 40% crystallinity. They are brown to black in color. They have excellent specific strength and stiffness, excellent dimensional stability, high temperature stability, TG is 150, its TM is 334 Celsius. Go excellent chemical and wear resistance, inherent flammability resistance, very good harsh environments performance, which is why you would be using this for wiring insulation because of the harsh environments it would be in. It also is easier to process compared to polyether imid. And because of these characteristics, it truly can compete with, say, traditional materials like metals and ceramics. It can provide the properties that are necessary uh, in place of metals and ceramics. It's the choice material for a lot of innovative applications in agriculture, aerospace, automotive, electronic, food, energy, and medical applications. Currently, the demand for peak is higher than the current production. Current production capacity about 6.5 million pounds per year, uh, and the consumption has doubled in 10 years. Uh, so every pound that is made is consumed. This is an engineering material in, in terms of its properties, but it's the specialty material in terms of its price. Now, every pound that is produced is sold, so they can kind of name their price, and so that tends to get really high cost per pound, so 35 to $40 per pound. Uh, it is very high cost and low vol volume usage, which is the only reason it's considered specialty. It is engineering in terms of its outstanding properties. This is peak synthesis. Now, you again start with uh, bisphenol A but you create a salt out of it, which creates this uh, ion. Uh, it attacks these fluorinated monomers, and this gives you the uh, ether, ether, ketone backbone. The most common form is the com form made from bisphenol A. Because bisphenol A is a commodity chemical, it's used for epoxies, it's used for polycarbonates, it's used for a bunch of other 
uh, syntheses, so it's cheap in terms of starting material. Uh, fluorinated monomers, however, are not cheap, so that gets pretty expensive. Uh, it is highly crystalline, thermally stable, resistant to many chemicals, and very tough. And it can be melt processed, but at very high temperature, so greater than 300 Celsius. It has specific applications, like pipes and oil refineries, chemical plants, and aerospace parts. It has good specific properties. Well, what is a specific property? Uh, it is the property divided by the specific gravity. So, uh, generally, the more dense a material is, the better strength it has overall. Uh, but when you have a low density material, you have to take its specific gravity into account. So, uh, peak specific gravity is a little bit lower, and it has very good properties for its density. Uh, you can have up to 33,500 psi uh, for modified peak. Uh, you can get uh, properties that are temperature dependent. Uh, you can get tensile strength above 200 degrees Celsius that is still very high in carbon fiber filled peak. Uh, very high flexural strength. Uh, we're talking in the millions of psi for a carbon fiber filled uh, flexural moduli. Again, very good strength and modulus in the compressive uh, realm. Uh, the tensile elongation is uh, pretty low. For something that is unfilled, it's up to 30%. For something that is filled, it's 2.5%. That's kind of what filler does. Whether you add it to a uh, thermoplastic or a thermal set, it tends to reduce your tensile elongation, makes it more brittle. But it also makes the strength that much higher. Uh, when it coming to carbon fiber and glass fiber, your impact resistance is pretty high. Um, but notched izod is pretty high for unfilled peak as well. Uh, when you uh, do impact resistance on an unnotched peak, it doesn't break at all. You can bang on that sucker forever. But when you put in a little bit of carbon fiber, you can actually get it to break, but again, at 14 foot-pounds per inch, which is very, very high. The reason it has high dimensional stability is a bulky aromatic backbone that also creates low elongation, which leads to low mold shrinkage. Uh, your, your mold shrinkage in unfilled peak is 1.5 to 1.8, both in the flow and transverse directions. If you fill it uh, with carbon fiber or glass, that makes your mold shrinkage even lower. But overall, this has a low coefficient of thermal expansion. It has very good chemical and wear resistance at high temperatures and harsh environments. It has uh, high abrasion resistance and cut through resistance and a low coefficient of friction in and of itself. Again, high thermal stability, heat deflection temperature up to 290 Celsius. Uh, if, you, if you put your carbon fillers in it, you can push the heat deflection temperature up to 315 degrees Celsius. Uh, it has a, it is considered self-extinguishing. Its limiting oxygen index is 35. Uh, so you don't need flame retardants, uh, but it's lower than a lot of the other uh, uh, sulfur and oxygen containing ones. It has remarkable hydrolytic stability. Uh, it is steam resistant, which is unique to peak. Uh, it has high chemical resistance, uh, but it is susceptible to strong oxidizing agents and anhydrous agents. It is resistant to hot chemicals due to the high temperature stability. So as long as you're not using a, a hot oxidizer or anhydrous agent, you can put hot chemicals uh, through peak parts. Good electrical resistance, again, only for uh, the low voltage applications that demand the uh, harsh environments properties that peak has. Most commodity thermoplastics have better electrical insulating properties than peak, but very few of them can withstand the harsh environments like peak can. Um, it has an ease of processing compared to, say, polyether imid. Uh, when you're talking about injection molding, extrusion, compression molding, powder coating, and other thermoplastic methods, it is inherently pure and recyclable. So again, you're not going to be making drink bottles out of this, it's not going to be post-consumer waste, but if you have any of this left over in a pre-consumer or post-industrial realm, then it can be put back into the process and, and recycled very easily to save you money, that uh, $40 per pound. It is not UV resistant, so you do need some uh, weatherability fortification. Uh, it's not really well suited for outdoor applications, even if you do uh, add some UV resistance. It does have good resistance to X-rays and gamma rays. It can withstand about a thousand uh, me megarads of loss without, of, without loss of mechanical properties, and this allows them to be sterilized for medical applications. They are considered physically, uh, physiologically inert and biocompatible. They have a USP class rating of uh, 11 for medical applications. That's not 11. That's 6. USP class 6 rating and an FDA regulation 21 for food contact applications. So 
So if you have something that you're using this for, uh, honestly, this is probably used for cookware or uh, high temperature applications as opposed to, say, food packaging. The application areas of PEAK are aerospace, automotive, electronic, and medical. This is often used uh, in aircraft insulation systems. Uh, the Victrex Aptive film is used in thermal acoustic blankets. It's lighter than traditional uh, PVF, and it meets the FAA flammability requirements. It's also used in injection molded unmanned aerial vehicles. Uh, unmanned aerial vehicles for military surveillance, also known as drones. Uh, it's ex these are drones are expendable, therefore they are unmanned. They do not re they will not result in loss of human life. Uh, therefore, they're expendable, and they're a lot more cost-effective and security compliant than putting a person into a large piece of aircraft. Uh, Victrex makes it ideal for this. It is durable, corrosion resistant, has high temperature stability, and good dimensional stability. Uh, drones often go into uh, interesting uh, environments, and so the, a Victrex peak can withstand all of that. It's also used in uh, seat motor thrust washers. Uh, these have to withstand revolutions of, four, uh, of uh, 4,000 RPM, and uh, the Aptiv film can do that. Also needle roller bearings for engine, motorcycle engines and outboard motors, uh, and the Vicoat peak is used in place of copper or silver. This redu results in outstanding wear performance and a 50% weight reduction. So, you know, you put less gas in your motorcycle or, out or, or, or boat. Uh, they're also used for balance shaft module gears. Uh, they're called Metaldyne uh, Victrex Peak, which replaces iron and steel. That's a 70% weight reduction and a huge improvement in fuel economy. A lot of times, mo many vehicles, uh, aerospace, uh, recreational, or automotive, the big thing these days is light weighting. And light weighting uh, reduces your fuel economy. So you can make a, a, a lightweight vehicle that performs just as well, but over the long term, uh, use of that vehicle, the, the person who's piloting that vehicle, owns that vehicle, uh, has less uh, overhead to maintain it in terms of fuel. Now, nobody has uh, slider phones anymore, but uh, I sure did. And the mobile phone slide hinges, which again, aren't really used anymore, were coated with Vicoat. Uh, and that was to maintain the smoothness. Again, low coefficient of friction, so you go, you flip your phone, you know, in, your, in the late 90s, you flip your phone a little bit open, and it, you know, on the 200,000th cycle, it flipped open just as well as it did on the first. It's also used for semiconductors, high temperature cable and wire cup couplings, connectors, and clamps. Peak is also used because it is physiologically inert and biocompatible in medical applications. Uh, it can be sterilized uh, in both hot water, x ray, and gamma ray. Uh, it is used in surgical grips, endoscopic equipment, dental instruments, centrifuges, DNA analyzers, and x-ray and MRI devices. Again, these aren't single-use disposable type applications. These are the things we used over and over again. And here's a couple uh, neat little things. This is an injection molded uh, suture anchor made out of peak, and this is a micro molded implant for a minimally invasive procedure. This is a US dime, and here are some of these micro molded implants. There's one right there, and there's another little one. It's so cute. They're also used in bushings, uh, uh, bearings, seals, and backup rings for oil field drilling, pumpware rings, casings, and impellers, and vacuum wand handles in the semiconductor industry. So this is a valve plate that's used in oil and gas transmission. Again, this is typically something that would have been iron or steel, which is now uh, a peak product. Thus concludes uh, polyether ether ketone. We will move on to here from polyphenylene oxide to conclude the sulfur and oxygen containing polymers.